Hello. <laughs> okay, everybody. So right now I have my octopus. He has been dried in the oven. He has been baked. And I am going to show you how to get the coloring on it. So like I said, I am going to be using chameleon powder. So I'm going to get that stuff ready. And I'm going to show you actually the colors that I'm using right down here. And I think you can see there's like a blue here. These are chameleon powder, so they're going to change in the light. And then I have this sort of like a champagne color, they call it, but it's going to be very cool. So I just want to show you, I did all of these. I put a layer of liquid polymer clay on it so that there would be a surface for the powders to stick to but i am going to show you real quick i'm just taking some of the liquid polymer clay taking some of it like that get it on my brush and then i'm just going to literally just brush it on and it's going to go on kind of thick in the beginning so you're just going to want to take your brush and spread it around spread it out okay so that that's looking pretty good. Getting some liquid clay on there so that, so now what happened was I made it before, I made the body of it before, and then I put it into the oven so that it would harden up. And now I'm just putting this liquid polymer clay, just putting a small thin layer of it on here, just so that when I go to put the chameleon powder on, it has something to grab onto. Um, because if you just go and brush that chameleon powder onto the dry clay, it's just going to rub right off. So I'm going to put this on here and this will make the color permanent. You could, of course, also paint it. I don't want to paint it because I want that sh that, sh that color shifting effect. Just try to get it everywhere. And you can see I've done that with all the other arms. You see that sort of white film on it. Um, but you're not going to see that white when it's done. It's going to dry. It's going to, when you bake it, it's going to bake clear. Okay, so then once you have that base coat on there so that there's something for the polymer, for the powders to stick onto, now we're going to paint it. So this is the color scheme I'm going for. It's going to be this blue. You can't really see the effect of it that much on camera, but you'll see... After it's done, you'll see once it's spread onto the to this uh, octopus, you'll see it. So it's going to be that. It's going to be this they call champagne. It looks like a pink. It shimmers back and forth from like a pink to a peach. And then we also have this one, which is more like a gold, a gold yellow. I know in here it just looks like a boring color, but after it's on this thing, it'll actually shift color as you move the item around. And this is sort of a little sample of it on here of what it'll look like um, when it's all done. So now I'm going to take my separate brush. This brush comes with the chameleon powder. I like this brush. I use it for everything. Just, I mean, I use it for everything that I use chameleon powder on. And I am going to just knock off the rest of the chameleon powder that I have on it, on a little thing over here. And then I think I'm going to go with the same kind of theme. I'm going to do blue tips. So the edges of everything, all of the tentacles are going to be blue. And then I think I'm going to do, then I'm going to move to this pinkish champagne color for the ins, for like the middle part of the tentacle. And then the part that touches the body, I'm going to use this greenish kind of color for. So I'm going to start with that right now. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of the blue onto my brush. And I'm going to just start... I'm just going to start right here on the tip of this one. I'm going to get that on there nice and good. I don't want it to get into all the other paint, so I'm just going to move those over. Just going to, and you could see how it is, um, how it's got pretty good coverage. And you don't have to do, the good thing about using black underneath it is that it brings the color out a lot more. You don't have to do a lot of it uh, to get to get like that good effect. So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to color the tips, all of the tips in. You could do like a large amount of it. You could do just a little bit of it. I'm going to do a different amount on each tip 
So like some of them I'm going to do almost halfway. Some of them I'm really only going to do just the very tip of it. Get it on there. And you can see when it's on there, it's actually like very pigmented, this stuff. So it's really good for stuff like this because you're going to want that effect on it. And of course the head itself, I didn't do anything with. I didn't put any liquid clay on it. I didn't put any coloring on it. I just left it the way it was um, because I'm going to try to figure out where I want the eyes on it and I'm going to maybe use these color schemes and do like almost like a bullseye effect going down the whole body. So I'll see how that goes out. I'll see how that turns out as we go along. But for now, just the very tips of them are going to be blue. And then we'll move into the other color and I like to switch the colors up like this because you know octopus they're known for their color shifting and the ability for them to change their color and blend into stuff so you don't want to just do it one boring color this one i think i'm going to do more blue you know make the end color come down a little bit further just so everything doesn't look so you know the same and boring and I oh, also I just want to thank everybody for stopping in here to see what's going on. It's my day off, so I figured I would spend some time with you guys. So thank you for stopping in. Um, if you can like and share, that also helps me. And that would be much appreciated. Okay, so now you can see on the tip of all of this now, I have that blue color. That's all. Oh, wait, did I, did I miss one? No, I got that one. There's just not a lot on it. So now I'm going to just sort of tap this into this container, close this blue one up because this is basically mica powder. So it's going to get, as you can see, it's all over the place. So I'm going to try to keep it as neat as possible because I'm not known for being neat. Okay. And then maybe a little swipey swipey over here, get things a little bit clean as you go. And again, I'm doing it on this this thing here is really like a flooring tile but it's ceramic so you can actually put it into the oven in the end to bake it so that's why i like to make everything on this tile because if i have it in a perfect position and i don't want to move it i don't have to take it off of this and i don't have to move it to something else because that will ruin it thank you copycat i appreciate it all right now we're going to move to the next color so i'm thinking this green and then this like champagne color towards the body. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I want to do it the opposite way. You know what? I'm just going to go for it. We're going to do green next. So I'm going to take them again. Let me put this over here because I'll get confused. And then you're just going to go from where you just did the blue. Or whatever color you're using if you're going to do this. And you're going to fill in just a little bit more after that blue. So the blue is the tip. I like to do three different colors. Obviously, you could do whatever color you want to do as you're going along. But I just like the way it looks when it, you know, it sort of gives you more, like if you saw an octopus in real life, it would be like almost a psychedelic look to it as they're shifting their colors from one to the next. So I wanted to give it that sort of like blended look. And I'll even go at the end and like even some of these blues, I'll just go over real quick with this green. So you could see it sort of makes it a little bit easier to blend them together. Like it's not such a big difference between the blue and the green right here. And if I put a little bit of it on the blue itself, it'll sort of tame it down. Makes it so that it's not such a harsh, a harsh transition from one color to the other. But this stuff also, um, it changes color as you move it. You may not be able to see it on the camera because I feel like sometimes the camera just does not pick it up that great but you can see it does have like a certain color shifting movement to it hey roberto how are you thank you everybody for who's in here right now i appreciate your likes i appreciate you taking time to be with me but i just wanted to show you how that color shifts a little bit so again let's just go around to each arm we got the end color which is that blue now we're going to do a little bit of this green in the middle Make sure you get the ends anywhere that people are going to see it. You want to kind of, you know, like on the inside, it's not that important. I like to fill it in there anyhow, but it's also okay if you leave it black because it sort of adds to its mystery a little bit. But 
So it's going to go around and get as much coverage as you can. And then we still have that one more color left to do towards the body. So let's get that on. Let's get this colored in. Yeah, and again, like I said, you can also go over that blue to sort of mute it out. You could do whatever you want. Do your own thing. Do whatever you think is going to work for you. But I like to go back over it with the color before it. Because I feel like it sort of softens the transition from one color to the next. And I'm also going to... Well, actually, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to clean this off. Because, you know, before I made this guy, I made his body. Then you got to put him in the oven to harden the clay itself. Then when it comes out, I just did now, in case anybody missed it, I just took liquid clay. Painted each one of his arms with liquid clay real quick. Just a thin coat so that there'd be something for this powder to stick to. Uh, this color I am done with now. So I'm going to put that one to the side. Then we have this color, which is almost like a peach. Almost like a peach. I know it's really difficult to see on camera because camera really doesn't pick up like the color shift. But it's like a peach pink champagne kind of color. So, and this is the last color. So now what I'll do is get a lot of it on there and you're gonna go in and you're gonna go towards the body and just pull it away from the body. Just away. And by the, and it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, it's a handmade item. And this is sort of supposed to represent like a color shift in the octopus. So if you saw an octopus color shift in real life, you would notice that there's a lot of different you know, different colors going on. There's a lot of different things going on in its body. It's not always perfect and always 100% uniform. So we're going to just play around with this a little. And then again, take some of that. Well, this is what I do. You don't have to. But I take some of the color that I'm using now and I blend it into the color before. You probably can't notice it on camera. It probably just looks like blue, green, and like a reddish kind of color. But I like to do that because I feel like it helps it blend together so it's not just like one big blob and like this one there's not going to be much of this color on it because there's a lot of the blue and the green on it so and then again you could take it and just go over a little bit the color before it and that will help soften it up a little so it's not such a harsh transition from one color to the other this one could have probably used a little bit more liquid clay on it which i think actually while i have it over here i'm gonna put a little bit on and you'll see i'm just gonna like smooth it out on here put it on smooth it out like that because you'll see that black section is it really wasn't much right, let me get this side of it too there really wasn't much of the liquid clay there so there was nothing for that powder to stick to that's why i use the liquid clay because it acts as a glue now you'll see you'll see how there's barely any coverage here at all because there was no glue to hold it down to and now you'll see once I put that glue on it and you go to paint it with this you'll see there's much 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 more coverage here you could see an actual color here now and then again go over the color before it just to help with that transition from the one color to the next a little bit here a little bit there it's got its own section but then it's also going to appear in the other sections as well so that it cuts down on the harsh transition from one color to another make it look a little bit smoother and that's fine. And just a little bit here and there again. Go back a little bit here and there. And you could go back and change this too. If you're not happy with something, you can take that color. Like this color, I could completely cover this green with it. But I'm not going to because I don't want it to look like that. But hey, if you do, then do you, boo. All right. And now, and now you can see. Now, obviously, since I used liquid clay for this, there's going to be a... Uh, you have to, what do you think about that? What do you think about these colors? They look pretty cool, right? And they do shift from one color to another. It's just really hard to see it on camera. But all in all, I'm really happy with the coloring of it. But like I said, now that I use this liquid clay as an adhesive for my powder, my color powder, my color shifting powder, now I'm going to take it and I'm going to bake it again. Because that liquid clay will actually, you, you bake it. Let's say I was putting something together and I wanted to put a hat on this guy. I would glue it onto here now because this part has already been done with liquid clay and bake it. 
and this liquid clay would bake the same way that the regular clay bakes and it would permanently adhere to it. So now what I have to do to get that liquid clay to not be tacky and, and liquid is I have to put it in the oven just as if it was a regular piece of clay and bake it the same way just so that it gets hard and it becomes part of the item itself. What do you guys think? How'd it come out? You love it? You hate it? I think it came out pretty cool and I like the way that these um, powders work because it's like a shimmering, shifting effect. Uh, just like an octopus would be as you look at them change from one color to another and camouflage themselves into their background. And then of course his head is not done. He would need some kind of coloring on him, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to wait until this is done so I don't get smudges from this on that and vice versa. And it'll be all crazy looking. And I have to figure out somewhere that I want to attach eyes, which I will do in the next step. But for now, this is what we got. And he's got to go back in there so that he could be baked. And he is going to go do that now. But that's going to take, you got to bake it at 275. They say bake it for 15 minutes. I bake it at least half an hour if not more just because you don't want to underdo it if you overdo it and you can i mean you can burn polymer clay but if you have it at 275 i can't see how you could burn it so just keep an eye on it you know if it's smoking you got you got problems kid so just keep an eye on it and make sure that that it looks fine um, so now I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to put him back on this thing right here, this plate right here, because everyone's asking me about this. It's just a, what do you call this? You can see it's like got that construction stuff on the back of it. It's just a ceramic tile that you're going to bake him on, because you could put this ceramic tile in the oven. That's why I make everything on a ceramic tile, so I don't have to move it when it's in the position I want. I just take that whole tile and I put it into the oven. So now this little blob right here, I don't know if you could see it, you probably can't pick it up like this so you can take a better look. But that is the liquid clay. I literally just took it and dumped it onto here so I could use my paintbrush to pick it up. Instead of struggling to wipe that up because it's basically like glue, I'm just going to put it into the oven and I'm going to bake it with my item that I'm making. And then at the end of it, it's so much easier. I'm going to take something like this doohickey and I'm going to scrape, scrape, scrape it off and then just take a baby wipe. As you can see, I use baby wipes like, like they're gold. This is all the mica powder and stuff that was all over the place and it just sucks it right up. But at the end, I'm going to bake this item. This whole thing goes in the oven. And then this over here, that little blob that's left over, instead of trying to scoop it off now with a baby wipe and getting it all over the place and blah, 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 because it's sticky, I'm going to bake the whole thing. Then I'm going to take that... After it's done, I'm going to take this spatula and I'm just going to shoop, shoop it right off. You'll see it's a thousand times easier than trying to wipe it up with something. But so far, this is the halfway finished product. So we're going to stick this guy back in the oven. And then we're going to move on to the next step. It is multi-step. So if you're going to make your own, be prepared for that. You got to make the body, put the legs on, bake it. Bake it into the position. Like this is the position that I wanted the tentacles in. So that's why I took it and I baked it. Then you're going to take, after it's done, liquid clay. You're going to brush it on all of these pieces. Boop, 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 so that you have something to stick your mica powder to. And you don't have to use this. I'm using chameleon powder just because I want that color changing effect. Which you really can't see on camera. But you could see it in person. It's actually really cool. Um, and... You can literally bake it and then just take it out of the oven and paint it with polymer, polymer paint? No, acrylic paint. This is polymer clay. So you can paint this with acrylic paint at the end. Um, I'm just horrible, horrible at painting stuff. So I like to do the glue base, you know, the liquid clay base. And then I like to use micas to fill in for color. And you could use anything. You could have made, I could have made this white with like black dots on it. You could do whatever you want, obviously. Um, but I like to use those mica powders, the ones that I have, because they're color shift. So I figured for an octopus, as you see it changing its colors in real life, this color shift thing was a good idea for an octopus. So, And plus, I never get to use that color shift thing because people always want one color. Like they don't want, you know, 
uh, they don't want a tumbler with changing stuff. If they want a tree, they want a green. They don't want a green one minute and red the another. Although that would look cool because it would look like it's changing seasons. But I digress. <laughs> so, again, now I'm going to take this guy for anybody who just came in. He was painted with polymer clay after he was baked so that there would be a base for the uh, powders to stick to. And now that the powders are stuck to that liquid clay, I'm going to take them, put them in the oven, bake them. These colors are going to become permanent on here. And then there's another step. So I'm going to go do this. It's going to take like, it's probably going to take an hour because I like to let it bake longer than you're supposed to just so everything is hard and good. <laughs> And then when that's over, I take it out and I let it cool down for like another 20 minutes, half hour. So when that's all over with, I'll come back and I will maybe do the head of them. Because the head, as you can see, there's nothing done to the head. The head is just, the head is just a blob right now. I have to figure out a place where I want to put eyes. I have to color it somehow with this same stuff with that color shifting stuff but I gotta figure out how I want to layer it do I want to do like spots here and there do I want to make it rings going down the head I don't know yet but we'll figure that out later so right now I gotta go take this guy and I gotta bake him and that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> all right everybody appreciate you thank you for the likes you guys are the best um and I will be back and this is one that I have done before this is a different color scheme but you could see, and this guy, I made a mistake on him. You could see right here, there's like a big hole in his head. Where one of his tentacles was on here when I put him in the oven. One of these was wrapped around his head. Um, and it fell, and I didn't notice it. And it left that big scar on his head, so I have to fix that. I could fix that with um, liquid clay, fill it in. Or I might just put an eye in that spot, and you'll never even notice it. But that's what I gotta do. I gotta figure out the positioning of the eyes on the new one. And figure out color scheme for the head etc etc but either way he's got to get baked right now and that's gonna take it's gonna be like an hour because I gotta bake it I gotta extra bake it I gotta let it cool and then I can move on to the next step so oh also another cool trick is like this piece of clay I had left over so it stays wiggly so I just took those uh, what do you call it? I took those chameleon powders and I laid them on this side and then I laid it on this side And it looks like all one color here, but it's not I promise you it's just the camera the lighting in here is horrible But I just put it on there so I could see how the color scheme would work And this is the one I picked because actually this way it looks really good I know in the camera it doesn't look that fantastic But this way you'll have a representation like a visual of what it would look like before you put it on your project um, Okay and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed my live. I hope you guys come back. I hope you subscribe. I hope you're doing all that internet-y stuff. And I'm going to go finish this guy baking him. He's going to get baked. And then I'm going to come back later and I will do the rest. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for stopping by. And please subscribe because you need that stuff to be seen by more people. And I want to be seen by more people. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thank you. Bye.